Hi, I'm Mike Adams, Director of Instruction at the Academy of Golf at PGA National in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. This video is for you. What you are about to see is revolutionary. What you're going to find out is it doesn't matter how you're built or how athletically inclined, this system will work for anybody and everybody. Welcome to the Laws of Golf, a personal swing system that will help you customize your golf swing to fit your body type. The architect of this revolutionary new teaching system is Mike Adams. Mike has dedicated his career to research and development of the golf swing. Working with Mike are T.J. Tomasi, a noted instructor and writer, and Jim Suddy, a respected teacher of numerous PGA professionals. Special thanks to Bole, makers of Eagle Vision Eyewear, and PGA National in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. And now here's your host, Mike Adams. What we're going to learn is a revolutionary system teaching you how to develop your perfect ideal leverage golf swing. I'm going to throw it to you, Jim. Why don't you take us out on the tee and give us the characteristics of the leverage player? Okay, Mike, let's go. This is Warren, a PGA teaching professional here at PGA National. We're using Warren as our typical leverage player. A leverage player we're also classifying as a mesomorph, a mesomorph meaning muscular, uh, muscular body or balanced body. Another way of saying that is symmetrical body parts. If you look at Warren here, you can see the symmetry in his body from the top of the shoulder to the uh, tips of his fingertips. The arms aren't too long, aren't too short. Also, you look at the hips from uh, the hips to the ground, you see the same thing. If we turn him this way, you won't see a very large chest. You'll see just a normal chest. So his body type is uh, mesomorph, and a very balanced uh, body part, parts, and he would swing in that leverage dimension, which is in the uh, deep dimension that we've talked about. You'd uh, turn this way. Okay, now we're gonna teach you leverage players how to swing the golf club. We are now ready for the building blocks of a better leverage golf swing. Basically, the building blocks are three stages of the swing. They are the preparation stage, which is the first stage, the backswing stage, and the downswing to finish stage. If you follow the instructions in these building blocks, you will build a better leverage golf swing and hit your longest, straightest shots ever. Our first building block is the preparation stage. The preparation stage is basically everything that occurs before we begin to take the club back. The preparation stage is broken down into five basic areas. They are the grip how we hold the club, the ball position, where the ball is located in relationship to our body, our posture, how we bend to the ball and put ourselves in balance, our stance, how we set our feet, and our alignment. It's very important that we get the preparation stage perfect every single time because the preparation stage writes the script to how we have to swing the golf club. So we get a perfect preparation stage every single time we're well on our way to a perfect golf swing. The grip is the only part of the body that makes contact with the golf club. There are basically five things that must occur in a proper grip. The grip must, number one, guarantee firm control of the club without inducing tension. Number two, it must guarantee a square club face. Number three, it must unite the hands Number four, it must activate the muscles necessary to be used in the golf swing. And number five, it must allow us to use the proper hinging action that we'll be using for the swing type. Now, the way to grab the club is always take the club in front of you and grab it at a 45 degree angle, placing the pad of the left hand on top. What this does is it puts the club in the fingers and giving us firm control of the club without inducing tension. Most amateurs make the mistake by placing the club on the ground and grabbing it in this fashion. When we do this, the club tends to get too much in the palm and that will inhibit us from hinging the club correctly. So always grab the club at a 45 degree angle in front of you as such. Now, example, Warren, come on over here. Go ahead and grab the club up in front of you at a 45 degree angle. Now, take the last three fingers of the left hand off. 
let go. When I pull on the golf club, you can notice that Warren, I can't pull the club out of Warren's hand, and he's got firm control of this club. That's because we've angled it such that the pad will support the club. So now we've got firm control of the club without inducing tension. The second thing that must happen is we must guarantee a square club face. And we do that by taking the thumb of the left hand and placing it to the right of the center of the shaft. This is very important. The reason is, is because the way the body's designed is the joints will always seek alignment. By lining up the wrist joint, the elbow joint, and the shoulder joint with the center of the shaft and the leading edge of the club, we guarantee a square club face. Example, if I were to take Warren's hand and put the thumb on top, like most prescribe as a square grip, you'll notice that the left wrist joint is to the left of the center of the shaft. Now, when centrifugal force pulls the club out, what will happen is these three joints will seek alignment and the club face will open up, resulting in a slice or a push shot to the right. If I take the thumb and put it too far to the right of the center, the wrist joint gets too far to the right. So what happens is when centrifugal force pulls the arm out, once again, these three joints will line up, closing the club face, causing the ball to go to the left in a pull or a hook shot. So we want to guarantee the cl square club face by placing the thumb of the right left hand slightly to the right of the center of the shaft so the wrist, the elbow, and the shoulder are in alignment to begin with. Now, the right hand will simply clap up behind the handle and it will fit in position so the two pads of the right hand are where the thumb of the left hand will fit. When we put it in this position, we've supported the club, but what more importantly is we put the right hand directly behind the handle. We can only exert pressure in the direction that the right palm faces. By putting it in this position, it's in position to force down the line. Now, go ahead and grip it. We are now, if you notice, when we put the hands on properly, the knuckles line up. That's important because it unites the hands so they work together as a unit. Okay, go ahead and bring the club down. Now, what we want to do is grip the club with the last three fingers of both hands. If I grip the club with the index finger and thumb, the muscles that will be activated will be the bicep and the pec muscles. But if I grip with the last three fingers, you'll notice the forearm, triceps, traps, and lats are activated. And those are the muscles we want to utilize in the golf swing. Okay. Now Warren is ready to hit the golf ball. Now, a lot of us ask the question, should I interlock, overlap, or baseball? That's gonna, that really doesn't matter. What we want to do is find the grip that's best for you. So remember, when we grab the club, always grab it in front of you at a 45 degree angle, placing the pad of the left hand on top. Take the thumb of the left hand and place it to the right of the center of the shaft, so the shoulder the elbow and the wrist joints are in line with the center of the shaft and leading edge. The right hand will simply clap up behind the handle so it's facing the direction of the target. We will wrap the fingers around and grip the club with the last three fingers lining the knuckles up. We are now in position to hit the golf ball. The leverage player has three distinct ball positions. The left side of the face for all iron, six iron through the wedges. The logo on the shirt for the five iron through the fairway woods. And the left armpit for the driver and all teed up fairway woods. These ball positions are vital to a correct golf swing. The correct ball position facilitates the natural rotary motion the leverage player needs to hit the golf ball with power and accuracy. So make sure you get that perfect ball location every single time. Now what I'd like to talk to you about is posture. What posture does is sets the condition for you to swing the golf club in. So what I'd like you to do is get set up properly, perfectly, every single time. So let's talk about posture. Now we want to create a posture that will accomplish five things. Number one, a posture that creates room for the arms to swing. Number two, a posture that puts us in a dynamic athletic position, the position we play all sports from. Number three, a posture that puts all the load-bearing joints in alignment so we can have our muscles and joints at their optimal functional length. The fourth thing it must do is put us in position to create maximum velocity and maximum consistency. And the final thing it must do is create an axis that we can turn around freely. Now, let's show you how to do that.
We must create our posture by bending back from the knees and forward from the hip sockets. From the ankle to the knee, it must be straight up and down. Most amateurs make the mistake of forcing the knees forward. When they do that, the upper body gets into a erect position, creating no room for the arms to swing. So we must bend back from the knees. We also need to bend forward from the hip sockets, not the waist. There are no joints in the waist, and the, bo the body is designed to bend forward from the hip sockets. From the spine to the top of the lower spine, creates our axis and it's very important to have a straight axis to turn around so bending back from the knees forward from the hip sockets basically lowering your body into an at balanced athletic position now when you're in this position you're in the position that we play all sports from the identical position that the quarterback takes a snap from the infielder gets ready to pick up a ground ball. The tennis player prepares himself to receive a serve. A swimmer makes a racing dive. A linebacker backs at the line, and a basketball player plays defense. The position we play all sports from. This position also creates room for the arms to swing, and it lines up all my muscles and joints. The top of my spine, the tip of the elbow, the tip of my knee, and the ball and the feet are all in alignment. Also, if you look from head on, you'll find from this posture, it puts the shoulder, the hip, the knee, and the ankle joints in alignment, putting all the load-bearing joints on top of each other, able to support the load, and puts the muscles and joints at their optimal functional length. When I'm in this posture, what else happens is, is it puts the shaft and spine at 90 degrees to each other. Now, this is an important point. The reason being is the spine is the axis that the shoulders turn around and the club swings around. When the shaft and spine are at 90 degrees to each other, we recreate a position of maximum velocity and maximum consistency. Physics dictates that a swinging object will always swing fastest at 90 degrees to its axis and will always seek 90 degrees to its axis. If my posture were to get into an erect position, centrifugal force would throw the club out at this position and gravity would pull it down, forcing two opposing forces causing a slowing down of club head speed. But in this position, gravity and centrifugal force work to together, creating the maximum velocity and maximum consistency. So let's review what we need to do. To create the perfect posture, the first thing we do is we bend back from the knees and forward from the hip sockets, lowering our center of gravity, lining up all of our joints, putting the shaft and spine at 90 degrees to each other. Good checkpoint. Should be one hand's distance away from your body. You should be able to turn through to impact and not have your right leg run into the handle. If you do this, you set yourself into condition to make perfect golf swings. By stance, what we're talking about is the positioning of the feet. I'm going to ask our able assistant, Warren, to come on in. Warren, if you would. Here is what we call a target line. The target line is an imaginary line that connects the ball with the target. As you can see, Warren is going to back off from the target line. He's going to take his stance as if the ball were on the target line. And I'm going to establish another position. And this is called a foot line. And if you can see, both lines are parallel. Now, if I attach another line from the heel that runs perpendicular to these two lines, and another line in this situation running parallel, well, we can see we've created a geometric figure called a square. So that when you hear the term that he's square to the target, what it means is that his shoulders, his hips, his knees, and his feet are all parallel to the target line. And this is the best, most advantageous position for the leverage player to play golf in. Now in terms of the stance width, you notice here that his feet are perpendicular to begin with to this line. If his stance were too wide, as he moves his foot back even wider, and notice as he comes through, his knee does not touch his front knee. This would indicate that his stance was too wide, and what it would cause is a reduced hip turn and no doubt a sway. If he's too narrow and he comes through to his finished position, the back knee overlaps the front knee. Obviously, his feet were too close together to begin with, and what this would cause would be a reverse weight shift 
and that's not something the leverage player wants to tangle with. In this case, however, being the good player that Warren is, he's set up perfectly. And so when he comes through, notice the relationship of the back knee to the forward knee. They're about equal, and that tells us that he's in perfect position. Now, how do we find our proper foot position? To do this, I'm going to need three golf clubs. Warren, go ahead and stand in a square position. The first golf club is going to go from the left toe to the right heel. The second golf club will go from the right toe to the left heel. What this does is creates 45 degree angles. This is the amount of rotation that is going to be necessary in the golf swing. So the first thing we're going to find is determine how much flare we're going to need in the right foot to determine how much rotation we're going to have with the right hip. Warren, take the club and place it across the top of your thighs. Now, ideally, what we want to see happen is we want to see the flex in the right leg maintained, and we want the shaft that goes across the top of the thighs to match the one on the ground. So he will then have 45 degrees of hip turn. Okay? Go ahead and turn back. Now, what you notice is happening is Warren's right leg is straightening up too early, and he doesn't reach 45 degrees of hip turn. So we need to flare that foot out more. Go ahead and flare it out more, Warren. Let's flare it way out. Now, go ahead and turn, Warren. With it flared out too much, what we see is we have too much rotation in the backswing. Square it up a little more. Now turn back. When we find the perfect amount of flaring, we'll see is the right knee maintains its flex. The shaft matches the one on the ground proving that the hips have now turned a full 45 degrees, which is necessary for the leveraged golf swing. Now, what we're going to do is work on how much flare of the left foot for the downswing. Now, at impact, what we would like to see happen is this left leg must straighten at impact as the hips reach 45 degrees. So what we want to happen is the left leg will straighten when the golf club reaches impact and the hips have turned their full 45 degrees through the shot. This is very important because what we're trying to create is acceleration at the bottom of the arc. We want the golf ball struck with maximum velocity. And to ensure this, we're going to have to get a correct left foot position. Now what we need to understand is the theory of transference of energy. When I step on the accelerator of a car, the car goes faster but there is no transference of energy. But when I slam on the brake, we now have transference of energy as my head is thrown into the windshield. Well, the same thing must happen. The left leg is slamming on the brake, so the acceleration occurs prior to or at impact. So what we need to do is find a foot position that permits this to happen. Now, as Warren turns through the shot, what we notice is this leg is straightening up before he reaches 45 degrees. What will happen is we will have acceleration, but it will occur in this part of the golf swing, so it will be decelerating through the golf ball. Okay, now, flare the left foot out too much. Okay, with the left foot flared out too much, what we see is the left leg maintains its flex, and he turns well past the 45 degrees. Okay, square it up a little bit. Now, once we have the ideal position, what we will see is the left leg straightening and locking as the hips reach 45 degrees, guaranteeing the acceleration occurring into the back of the ball in the direction of the target. So this is how you find your ideal foot flaring for your stance. So let's review a couple things. The widest the stance will ever be will be the width of the shoulders. The narrowest it will ever be will be the width of the hips. We will simply use the drill to, flare, to find our proper flaring of the feet. What this will do is guarantee perfect rotation in the backswing and proper rotation and acceleration on the downswing. If you utilize these tips, I guarantee you're going to start to hit the golf ball much longer and much straighter. The only thing set to aim at the target is a club face. What I'm going to have Warren do is place the club face directly behind the golf ball and aim it at the target. This is known as the target line. We will build our setup around this club face. We will then set our feet parallel 
to that target line. Our hips will also be parallel to the line. Now it's important for us to have the hips in a parallel or square position. The reason being is if we start the hips from an open position, it will cause us to underturn our hips on the backswing. If our hips start from a closed position, it will cause us to overturn on the backswing but underturn on the through swing. So we want to start from a square position so we can have maximum turn both directions. The final thing we're going to get lined up are the shoulders. Now the shoulders need to be parallel to the target line and the reason we want these shoulders parallel or square to the line is the arms will always swing the direction the shoulders point. If the shoulders are aligned to the right, the arms are going to swing to the right or in to out. If the shoulders are aligned to the left, the arms are going to swing out to in. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we get the shoulders parallel to the line. So the shoulders, the hips, and the feet will be parallel to the target line and the club face will be aimed at the target. Now let's review the five elements of the preparation stage of the leverage golf swing. First let's talk about the grip. The leverage player will always take a hold of the club by grabbing the club at a 45 degree angle up in front of him, placing the pad of the left hand on top the thumb of the left hand slightly to the right of the center of the shaft, aligning the shoulder, the elbow, and the wrist joints with the center of the shaft and the leading edge guaranteeing a square club face. The right hand will simply clap up behind the handle in the direction of the target, gripping the club with the last three fingers of both hands. The ball position. We will locate the ball opposite the left side of the face for all irons, six iron through wedge. The long irons and the fairway woods will be positioned opposite the logo on the shirt and the driver and teed up fairy woods will be positioned opposite the left armpit. The posture will be created by bending back from the knees and forward from the hips, lowering the center of gravity, aligning all of our muscles and joints, putting us in a balanced athletic position, putting the shaft and spine at 90 degrees to each other for maximum velocity and maximum consistency. We will build our setup around our club face. The club face will be aimed at the target, with the shoulders parallel to the target line, the hips parallel, and the stance parallel. Once we've set ourselves in the proper preparation position, we are ready to make a proper golf swing. Majority of women will be what we term leverage players. The reason you women are leverage players is because of the strength factor. The leverage swing enables you to set the club much quicker and put it in a lighter, more controllable position earlier in the golf swing. Because of that, women will become leveraged players. But because of women's construction, you women are built differently, so you have to set up to the ball slightly different. Tachi, I want you to come on in here and give me a hand. Now, the way to find your ideal grip is simply allow your left arm to hang naturally from the side. You notice when the left hand hangs naturally, her hand is turned in slightly more than mine. And because of this, what's going to happen is she's going to have to grip the club slightly stronger. Then she's simply going to take the club with her right hand and bring her left hand up in the identical posture that it was in when it was hanging. Then she's simply going to drop the right hand down until the hands meet. Now, most women make the mistake here of interlocking the finger. For some reason, there is a confusion that interlocking is the best grip for small hands. In reality, it's the worst. Because what happens when you interlock is the left hand ends up turned too much under and the right hand too much under. So we end up with a weak left and a strong right, what we commonly call the hot dog and ham sandwich grip. What I prefer to see is either baseball or overlapping. With the baseball grip, what this enables the women to do is gives them more freedom for wrist movement, allowing the club to set much quicker and allowing it to release much stronger through the golf ball. The overlapping grip, what this does is unites the hands but still gives it freedom of movement. So women should either have a baseball or an overlapping grip. So remember, allow your left arm to hang naturally, 
Bring the club up in front of you at a 45 degree angle, placing your left hand on top. Then simply bring the right hand up to match, either baseball or overlapping. Now let's talk about ball position. Because of the slightly stronger left hand grip, we're going to have to move the ball back slightly. The stronger the grip, the more the ball has to be moved back in the stance. Because what happens is, the grip, stronger grip, is going to close the club through impact. So what we're going to do by moving the ball back, it's going to allow us to catch the golf ball at the bottom of our arc in a square position. The posture is the next thing we need to talk about. Tatiana, let's go ahead and create the posture. Now. What we have to find is an ideal posture that allows her to only have 45 degrees of arm swing. So what we're going to do is we're going to start in position. The way you find this is you simply bring your right hand up and allow your left arm to swing across your chest. If your posture is too erect, the left arm will run into the chest before the left hand reaches the right hand. So then we'll bend you over more. If the posture is bent over too much, the left arm will go past the right hand before it runs in the chest. Ideally, we want to find a posture that allows her only 45 degrees of arm swing because we're going to have our hips 45 degrees through at impact. We need to have 45 degrees of arm swing. So the left arm position will swing right across the chest, and this would be the ideal position for Tatiana. What else we're going to do is place the left arm on top of the chest so that we don't have to avoid the chest in the backswing. So ladies, the first thing we're going to do is try to find the ideal position. Simply bring your right hand up, swing your arm across the chest. If the left arm runs into the chest at the same time the left hand touches the right, we know we found the perfect posture for you. So remember these little variances. Allow the left arm to hang naturally bringing it up, placing it on the club the exact way it hangs. Clap the right hand up behind it. Play the ball slightly farther back. The stronger the grip, the more the ball is going to have to move back in the stance. Take your left arm and place it on top of the chest and bend forward to the hip, from the hip sockets until you find a position that gives you only 45 degrees of arm swing. You make these slight little changes and the leverage golf swing will be yours for keep. We're now ready for the second building block of the golf swing. It is what we call the backswing. The backswing is broken down into two elements. The initial stage of the backswing, which is basically from the golf ball to waist high back, and then the loading zone of the backswing, which is from waist high back to the top of the backswing. This is where we create our coil and prepare ourselves to strike the golf ball. There's two things that must happen in the initial stage of the backswing for the leverage player. The first thing is the left arm must swing across the chest. The second thing is the right hip must turn back over the right heel. Now I'm going to talk to you about each one of these and explain the importance in each one and, must, and why they must happen in proper sequence. Now what we've been all taught is the one piece takeaway. The one piece takeaway is magic for the arc player, but it's tragic for the leverage player. Because what happens is, when the leverage player makes a one-piece takeaway, number one, the club gets in the depth dimension too early. Number two, the turn occurs too early, creating the coil too early. And then what happens is, the club must be lifted and throwing the weight back to the left side, releasing the coil and putting them ahead of the golf ball. So what we need to do is start with arm swing. The leverage player will swing the left arm across the chest. When the leverage player swings the left arm across the chest, stretch is created. Now why is it important to create stretch? Because if I have slack in my backswing, I'm going to have slap in my downswing. And there's a couple reasons why we have to have this stretch. When we create this stretch, number one, it lengthens the left arm. The reason we want it to lengthen the left arm is because at address, the left shoulder is this high, but yet at impact, what you notice is the left shoulder is much higher. If we don't stretch the left arm, we will not get down to the golf ball. So what we need to do is allow the left arm to swing across the chest. Okay, now let's turn this way. 
Now as the left arm swings across the chest, we, we create the necessary stretch. What else this does, it puts us in position where the left arm has swung 45 degrees across the chest. Now this is important for power. Two reasons. Number one, because the left arm is 45 degrees across the chest, it allows me to turn my hips 45 degrees through to deliver the club back to the golf ball, allowing me to use my lower body to create more f power. The second thing it does is it puts body behind the head. Example, if Warren were to simply push on my hand, go ahead and push on my hand out, with the left arm away from the chest, there's not much force. I can shove his hand back into his side. But if I place the left arm against his chest, go ahead and turn through, Warren. What you notice is quite a bit more power and leverage because when that left arm is against the chest, we now have body behind the head allowing us to create more power. So by creating that left arm swinging across the chest, we put ourselves in the impact position early. It also allows the right arm to swing away from the body, keeping the club down the toe line and putting us in position for the next stage of the backswing. The right hip, though, while this is all happening, turns back over the right heel. This establishes our lower body pivot point. The leverage golf swing has three axes. The spine, with the shoulders turn around and the club swings around, and the right hip and the left hip, which are the lower body axes. I can only turn my right hip if I turn my right hip over my right heel. I cannot turn on that right hip until that hip is over the heel. So the first thing that happens is left arm swings across the chest, right hip turns back over the right heel, establishing that pivot point. I have two drills to help you build the initial stage of your backswing. The first drill is the arm swing drill. To help us with this arm swing drill, we're going to utilize Warren, but we're also going to need two props. The first one is a shaft with a piece of half-inch PVC stuck in the end of it. This is going to represent the shaft plane. This will be put in at the identical angle of the shaft. The second piece of apparatus we're going to need is a piece of surgical tubing. Now, how we place this surgical tubing is vital to the exercise. We're always going to place the surgical tubing down the handle as such. Okay, now grab it, Warren. Okay, the end of the, of the surgical tubing will go underneath the left foot, and it's important that we get it to the outside of the left foot so that we can get the pulling from the correct position. Now, what the sur surgical tubing does for us, it gives us resistance. When there is resistance, the muscles have to function more dynamically and correctly. When that occurs, we are bypassing the conscious learning system and allowing ourselves to learn the swing subconsciously, allowing it to be a more permanent learning experience. Now, what we do here is we simply hold the shoulders and we swing the left arm across the chest. Go ahead, Warren. As we swing the left arm across the chest, the right arm moves away and the shaft moves down the toe line, putting us in the ideal position. Let's do it again, Warren. This exercise, I would like to see you hold after each drill. Take it back, hold it for a five count, and bring it back. I'd like to see you do this exercise at minimum of 25 times every single day. What this is going to do is teach us the proper sequence of how the arms work and teach us the proper arm swing. Work on this drill. You're going to get what the upper body needs to do in the initial stage perfect every single time. The second drill I'm going to teach you is how to use your hips properly in the backswing. In the initial stage, the right hip is going to be turning back over the right heel to establish the pivot point. This movement occurs simultaneous to the arm swing, so they will be occurring at the exact same time. So to do this drill, what I'm going to do is take a golf club. I'm going to take this golf club and place it from Warren's right heel to his left toe. This signifies the 45 degrees of hip turn we're going to need. He's going to take the club and place it across the top of his thighs. Then he's going to take his right heel and lift it off the ground. Now the goal here is to turn the right hip over the right heel. When that occurs, that right heel should plant, the right knee should maintain its flex, and the shaft should match the one on the ground. Let's do it again. Turn back. Perfect. 
Now I'd like to see you do this drill a minimum of 25 times every single day. Once you've mastered this drill and the arm swing drill, you put the two together. And the way we put them together is we simply place the shaft on the ground as such. We grip the golf club. We then take the PVC pipe, sticking it in the ground and gripping the club with the surgical tubing. And all he'll work on is turning the right hip back over the right heel as the left arm swings across his chest. Go ahead, Warren. Perfect. Do it again. If you master this drill, you've mastered the initial stage of the backswing. You are now ready for the loading zone. Now what I'm going to take you to is the final stage of the loading zone, where all of the elevation and rotation occurs. But before we do that, we first need to show you how to find your ideal top of the backswing position. And the way we do this is you simply stand to your side, take your right hand and fold it up. Where the right thumb reaches the right shoulder is where we're going to place the golf club. Okay. So I will place the golf club here. The other, the head of the club, will be placed on the opposite shoulder. Then what we're going to do is simply let the arm swing and turn to the top. If we're in correct position, the shaft will rest right on that golf club. That'll put us in the perfect position. Notice when we're here, the elbows are level, the back of the left hand, the club face, the back of the left arm and the shoulders are perpendicular to the spine. Now, let's show you how to get there. To help us do that, we've got a couple apparatuses. The first one is called the swing extender. This will simply fit on your right arm, just above the elbow. What this is designed to do is keep us from letting the right arm fold more than 90 degrees. It's vital for the leverage player never to have more than 90 degrees of arm fold. Now, the second one is the swing director. With the swing director, we're going to place it across the chest. What this is going to do is prevent the right arm from sucking too far to the inside, keeping it on plane so the club elevates and rotates properly. Now, if we watch a bad golf swing, what will happen is this right arm will get too deep in here and get us in trouble. So when we do this correctly, what will happen is Warren will swing the arms across his chest, the arm will slide across and down this. And from this position, all that's going to happen is right arm is going to fold, elevating the club and elevating the left arm and rotating it into the top of the backswing position. This is where we want to be at the top of the backswing. Once again, elbows level is a checkpoint. Right arm, no more than 90 degrees. Left arm, shoulders, back of the left hand and club face, all perpendicular to the spine. This is the ideal top of the backswing position, ready to slot the golf club and deliver it to the golf ball. Now you're ready for the final and third building block. That is the downswing to finish. Now the downswing to finish is basically broken down into three elements. The first element is the transition and slotting of the golf club. The second element is the delivery zone to impact. And the final element is from impact to finish. Once we show you this, you're ready to start hitting golf balls. Let's start with the transition and slotting the golf club first. Let's talk about the transition and slotting of the golf club. That is the first element of the downswing. Now three things must occur in the transition and slotting the golf club stage. The first thing that happens is the left arm slides down the chest, maintaining contact with the chest, dropping the club back to the shaft plane. The second thing that is occurring is the right arm is straightening, lining up the shaft and right arm, putting in position to deliver the club. While all of this is occurring, the weight stays on the right side as the left hip turns back over the left heel, reestablishing the pivot point, setting up the left side downswing axis. Now, we've got three drills to help us accomplish each one of these things. The first drill I'm going to show you is the butt board drill, showing you how the lower body works. The second drill will be utilizing 
the swing director, which will show you how to slot and drop the club and arms. And the final drill is the pump drill, which puts everything together, showing you how to drop the club in the delivery zone and then deliver it into the back of the golf ball. The first drill we're going to do is the butt board drill. What this is going to do is teach us how the lower body works in the downswing. Go ahead and get set up to it, Warren. We're going to utilize a chair as a prop. What we will do is bend forward and create our correct posture and place our two cheeks right up against the chair. Now as we turn away in the back swing, go ahead and swing to the top, the left cheek will work away from the chair while the right cheek maintains contact. As the club is slotted in the downswing, what happens is the left arm is sliding down the chest as the right leg maintains and the left hip turns back over the left heel so it makes contact with the chair. Let's do it again. Right cheek stays against the, the wall as the left cheek goes back against the wall and the arms drop into the slot. Do it again. It's very important while doing this drill that the right leg is maintaining its position. Let's look at it from head on now. Take it back to the top. Now what you will see is the fabled bow-legged position. Now here's what happens. The right knee is out in the direction of the right foot and it just simply maintains because this is still your lower body axis. And the left hip turns back over the left heel as the right cheek stays against the wall, left hip recontacts the wall, establishing the left side pivot point and establishing the left side axis. While this is occurring, the right arm is straightening and the left arm is sliding down the chest, making sure the club comes down instead of moving forward. Do it again, Warren. Good. Do it again. It's very important for you to do this. By working on this drill, what you're learning to do is not only slot the club and establish your pivot point, but you're learning how to save your lower body for the delivery zone so we have our legs to hit the golf ball with. Work on this drill and I guarantee you're going to get better. Our second drill focuses in on the slotting and dropping of the golf club. To assist us in that, we're going to utilize the swing director. The swing director will simply fit across Warren's waist as such. As you can see, most of it extends out to the right. Now what this is going to do is going to teach him to drop the club in front of his body, making sure the club stays in front and drops it to the delivery zone. Okay. Now, what we have to understand is if we do this part of the swing incorrectly, such as tucking the elbow and getting the club moving forward before it moves down, what will happen is the shaft will hit the club on the downswing. Okay, set up to it. So what needs to happen is, take it back to the top, the right arm straightens as the left arm slides down the chest, dropping the club in the slot. As you can see, it puts us in perfect position. A good, a good way to develop this drill is simply to take a golf club, go ahead and take it back to the top, place it under, over the left arm underneath the right elbow. And all you do is pull down on this as it's coming through. What this does is keeps the left arm against the chest and forces the right arm to straighten properly, sliding the golf club into the delivery zone. Let's do it again, Warren, and feel that. If you work on this drill, it will get you in the perfect delivery zone position, ready to deliver the golf club into the back of the golf ball. The second element of the downswing is the delivery zone to impact. In this area, what we will find is that the club is dropped down in line with the shoulders on the shaft plane. The legs have resisted and held back, waiting to deliver the club into the back of the golf ball. Let's see how we do it, and we're going to teach you a drill called the pump drill, and we're going to show you how to build this all together. Take it back to the top. As we're starting down, the right leg resists, the left arm slots, dropping the club into here. We are now in the delivery zone. Notice how the shoulders and shaft match. Notice how the lower body has not been used yet. Now all that happens is the left hip rotates back and the right one rotates through. With the left leg straightening at impact, the right heel working to the inside and striking the golf ball with the full force of the lower body. Turn around and face, Warren. Take it back to the top. Okay, drop it down. See, the legs have resisted. They haven't gone yet. 
Now all that happens is left hip turns through, delivering the club into the back of the golf ball. The feeling is this, take it back to the top, drop it down, and feel just like this. So the acceleration occurs in this area here. Go ahead and set up to it. It's very important that we don't get jumping off our right side or going too quickly with the lower body. A good way to practice that is simply flare the right foot out more and begin the pump drill. Now that's what Warren's going to do. Come on over here, Warren. Set up to it. Now the pump drill, we're going to flare the right foot way out to make sure we stay on the right side. We tee the golf ball up and all that happens is Warren takes it back to the top. There will three practice downswings. One, two, three. While this is occurring, you notice the left arm stays against the chest, the dish angle of the left hand increases, and the legs get into a bow-legged position. On the final pump, Warren goes ahead and hits the golf ball. Excellent. Work on this pump drill daily, and you will learn how to deliver the golf club into the back of the golf ball at maximum speed and maximum direction. I guarantee if you do these drills and work on this part of the golf swing, you're going to get better and better and better. TJ, why don't you take us from impact to finish? Take us to the finish, if you would. Beautiful. Notice a couple of things about this finish. This is a typical leverage finish. The first thing you're going to notice is that his body is pointing, his chest is pointing slightly to the left of the target. That's because he's supple and he's released his right side through impact. Second thing you're going to notice is that he's using his back foot for a rudder. That gives him balance with almost 100% of his weight on the left side. And the third thing that you'll notice is the club is coming out of his left shoulder and he's slightly tilted. This is due to swinging underneath the golf ball through impact. Well, are you ready? Yes, I am. All right, let's see it go. Well done. So if you follow the laws model, find yourself in the model as a leverage player, these are the stages that you're going to go through to build your golf swing. Power. I've never met a golfer who doesn't want to hit the ball farther. That is a desire of all of us. Well, the key to power is understanding where we lose it. Because what we do is we develop power leaks in our golf swing. If we understand where those power leaks come from, we can understand how we hit the ball farther. Now, the key to understanding power leaks is to understand how the leverage player generates the force. The leverage player generates the force through mechanical advantage, stretch, coil, and a centered and rotary action. Anything that causes us to lose any of our stretches, any of our coils, or any of our uh, connections is going to cause us to hit the golf ball shorter. So what we need to do is make sure we don't do that. So let's understand, number one, how we need to set up to it. Number two, how to create the correct stretches, the correct coils, and the correct connections to hit the golf ball farther. Now, let's start with the setup. The first power leak usually occurs in the grip. The grip gets in a weak position where the left hand is turned too much to the left of center. When that happens, the club face is always coming through in an open action. So we quit using our hips so we hit the golf ball much shorter because the hips generating the force causes more power. But when the weak grip, we end up with more arm slapping action. So we want to make sure and get the proper grip. The second power leak is the right hand. If the right hand happens to get on the club too much on top, it sets the club in properly so we don't ever get our stretch correct. So we need to make sure and get the right hand directly behind the handle. The next area is the posture. Now, we want to get our posture such that we create the proper amount of stretch and get the proper amount of coil, plus get our shaft and spine at 90 degrees to each other. If I bend over too much, what happens is I end up creating too much arm swing and I lose the stretch. If I stand to a wreck, 
my arm runs into my side too early and my shoulders turn too early. So ideally we want to get the arms hanging and get the shaft and spine at 90 degrees to each other. With the shaft and spine at 90 degrees to each other, like I explained earlier, we will get maximum velocity and maximum consistency. So we need to have proper posture. We also need to have the proper foot position. The right foot and left foot must be flared out. If the right foot is too square, what happens is when I turn back in the backswing, the right leg locks up so I never get into my right side and don't create the proper coil. So we need to have the right foot flared out properly. Plus, with the right foot flared out properly, the right heel stays down to the inside on the downswing, keeping our foot-to-ground connection. My left foot connection is also important. If the left foot to ground connection is maintained, I hit the ball correctly with a lot greater force because I generate a stretch and coil in the backswing. If my left foot comes off the ground, I lose that, that connection and I also lose all the coil and stretch I create. Now let's understand what the stretches and coils are. The first coil in the golf swing is from ankle to knee. That is simply when the knee rotates in, it creates a stabilization and creates the first coil, which sets up the second coil from knee to hip. Now, if my left knee collapses in, I lose that first coil, which causes me to lose the second coil and throws my weight to the side. If the left knee collapses forward, I shorten the left side and my body tilts forward. So we need to make sure and get that first coil from ankle to knee. The second coil is from knee to hip. Now that happens when the right hip turns back over the right heel. Well, the key to that is the right foot position. When the right foot is flared out, the right hip is able to turn over the right heel and helps create the coil from knee to hip. The third coil is from hip to shoulders. That happens when the arms swing across the body and the body rotates through. Now, if my right hip turns back over my right heel, I am able to turn the left shoulder behind the golf ball, creating the proper coiling action. Now, let's talk about the stretches now. The first stretch is the left arm swinging across the chest. When the left arm swings across the chest, it takes all the slack out of my backswing. When I have slack in my backswing, I will always have slap in my downswing. So we need to make sure that left arm swings across the chest. The second stretch is the right hand hinging back this way. When that happens, it further stretches the left side. So that is why it's important for us to grip the club with the right hand directly behind the handle. And the third stretch is the folding of the right arm, where the right arm only folds to 90 degrees. If the right arm folds more than 90 degrees, we lose our left side stretch and causes us to have a power leak and hit the ball shorter. So we need to make sure when the right arm folds, it does not fold more than 90 degrees. Now to generate the proper amount of force and to maintain that force throughout the golf swing and eliminate those power leaks, we need to make sure and maintain our hands to club connection, arm to chest connection, and we also need to maintain our three stretches and three coils. If we keep the three stretches and the three coils and the three connections, I guarantee you're going to hit the golf ball longer and straighter and play better golf every single time. Remember, all you men and women who fit the leverage model, practice the drills that we have shown you. Work on these fundamentals. Work on all three building blocks. Get the preparation stage perfect every single time. It's the only thing we have total conscious control over, and we should be able to get that perfect every single time. Work on the backswing, getting that perfect every single time. Work on getting the club slotted and delivered into the back of the ball, use, utilizing the drills, and then work on swinging through to a perfect finish every time, finishing in balance. If you work on these drills, and remember to focus on the fundamentals, I guarantee you'll play the best golf you've ever played in your entire life. For more information on the laws of golf, call 1-800-GOLF-TYPE. That's 1-800-G-O-L-F-T-Y-P-E.